What's up guys, my name's Amy and welcome back to my channel. Today we are at Set Up Camp and we are picking up our new camper trailer. Uh, if you saw my video a few weeks ago, I posted uh, us buying a camper trailer at the Brisbane Caravan Camping Show. So we have finally made it to the day where we pick it up. So we're really excited about uh, picking up our new OP4. Most importantly, it means that we can easily head off uh, as a family and go camping and enjoy uh, exploring parts of Australia together. And we're really excited about it. So I thought I'd show you what we get up to today, how to set it up and pack it up and uh, the run through and the handover that the guys at Set Up Camp do for us. Hey guys, you all know me, Scotty from Set Up Camp. I get the fun job of handing these camper trailers over to people and it is actually the highlight of my week. I don't do it as often as I'd like to anymore, but it's still a good fun. When you buy one, you come down and see me or you'll come down and see Anthony, we'll take you through the setup, the same as we are with these lovely folks. And while that's happening, we're getting the electric brakes uh, on our car and then we can start heading off on our holidays and travels around Australia. So hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you do like this video and you want to check out my other video when we bought a camper trailer, make sure you head over to my channel and check out all of my other videos. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, stay tuned. shower box is off the round key yep. and then the square key is for your water tanks. Everything else is a copy of. The most important key though is your front door key because it's also your bottle opener for when you're ready to inflate your camper trailer. <laughs> so all yours, you congratulations. Thank you. Red key is your main 12 volt supply. Take, turn that off, take it out, your whole 12 volt system is dead. Yep. No one can do anything with it. That's your main isolator on your 12 volt system. Put it in, turn it on, everything lights up. Up the top here is your current battery voltage. It's sitting at 13.6 at the moment because we're plugged into 240 volt power. 12.8 to 13 volts, as you can see from this sticker here, is fully charged for a 12 volt battery. Okay, below that is your current amp usage in the blue. Think of that like your liters per 100 k's in your car. Yeah. So you've got two 100 amp hour batteries in there. You can use 50% of it, so you've got 100 amp hours you can use safely. Yeah. Not including solar going back in, you can quickly add up how much you're using. So if you've got your lights on and everything on and it's saying like four or six amps, you can quickly do the math, how many amps per hour, that's six yeah. amps per hour. So how many hours battery life are you going to have yeah. without solar going back in or anything like that. Down below it, these switches are fairly self-explanatory. The lights are the lights in, on and around the camper trailer, so we have 12 volt lights inside. The fridge is exactly that, the fridge. The plugs is all your 12 volt plugs in, on and around the camper trailer, except for this one which is live 100% of the time as soon as you turn on the red key. And the pump two is your rear water tank or everything on the kitchen side of the trailer. And pump one is your front water tank or everything on the shower side of the trailer. Above it here, you've got all your circuit breakers so you're not looking for fuses anymore if something trips. Simply push the black button in and you'll hear and feel it click. If it trips once, don't stress about it too much. The same as your home, just reset it and mm -hmm. let it go. If it continually trips, we're going to go looking for a problem, yeah. something in there shorting out. This one here is your main circuit breaker. So everything that's not covered under one of these switches and your air pump all operates off this circuit yeah. breaker here. 240 volt circuit breaker is on the other side of the trailer. And we'll show you that when we get over there, but that's exactly the same as you want at home. Yeah. There too. Water tanks are a simple push button, shows you how much water's in there. When it goes red, then you've pretty much got nothing left 
you're pretty dumb for that one. Main harming switch for your air pump is that one. Turn it on, white lights up, and then push the button underneath. This looks pretty new. So if you care to turn on the fridge circuit there for me, please. As soon as you turn on the fridge circuit, everything on the front of the fridge will light up. We don't bother using the power button on the front of the fridge. You can if you want to, but you're better off just using that switch on and off there. This one down the bottom here will change the speed of the motor. Just always leave it on high. The current draw difference between high and low is very, very minimal. But remember on low, it's going to run for a longer period of time. Yeah. So in Queensland, especially with our heat, you're better off leaving it on high. Get that yeah. cold back into the fridge and let it yeah. cycle out again. Okay. Your temperature settings are just straight up and down through here. You take that divider out, turn the temperature back up and just go for whatever you want. Two is really, really good for food. It'll cycle between zero and four yeah. and it'll keep your food at a perfect temperature. Minus two is perfect for beer. Minus three will freeze it, believe it or not. I know. I've worked that one out on experience. When you close the fridge, just make sure you just release the tension off the spring. Don't just try and down on the lid, otherwise you may cause damage. If you can't remember any of it, it's all up here. Yeah. All your instructions are all up here in the top as well. So that's really, really simple. Inside the fridge compartment up here, you will see the Anderson plug that it's yeah. plugged into currently. The cigarette lighter plug beside it. If you need a cigarette lighter, you know, style fridge, yeah. you've got one. And the switch in there. The switch in there operates the fan on the door. Yeah. And that's what you're going to use if it's locked away on a really hot day. 12 volt fridges and like all fridges are really susceptible to heat. Yeah. So when you're driving, it's going to scoop the air through. You don't have to stress about it too much. Yeah. New keys. Just wearing the new keys. Get your drinking grade water hose, shove it in the hole, turn the tap on, and away you go. When the water comes back out of the big hole, it's not full. It's only three quarters full, so don't make a mistake of thinking it's full and driving off. Turn your water pressure right down. You're waiting for the water to come out this little breather hole up the yeah. top here. So once the water comes out that little breather hole up the top, then your tank's totally full. It's like a USB, it never goes in the right way. Okay, as soon as you turn on pump one or the pump for the front water tank, this tap becomes live. So you just turn that tap on and off and yeah. then water will come out of the shower head. This shower head's really good for water flow, not so good for water pressure. So I recommend using your Juker shower head for having a shower. You can turn the water off the shower head, it's got really good pressure, it's got your mist settings, your champagne settings and all that sort of stuff. So, um, this is where it's gonna get a little bit confusing. Okay, so the water system. The one closest to the gas port yep. is always water out. Okay, so that's water off your pump. Yep. That's gonna be with your pump one. The one furthest away from the gas port on both sides of the camper trailer is just an interlinking line that runs from one side of the camper trailer to the other. Yep. So you can cross crossfeed, exactly yep. right. There's a T piece in that crossfeed that comes up to this tap yep. in the pump. So whatever you plug into here, you're gonna get here. So if you want to hot water over the kitchen, cold water comes out of here, runs into there, pushes straight over the other side of the camper trailer, and then you'll have hot water. So if that comes from pump one out this one, you loop back around the pressurized the whole system. No. Oh. You're just running it straight back across the camp trailer. So if you want to use the front water tank in your kitchen, and we will go through that when we come back across, yes, you could just do that and straight back across and we'll push the front water tank water across your kitchen side for you. Yep, definitely. So kitchen, yeah, open up your kitchen. Black packs to sit on top. Try not to lose those. I do recommend keeping the store up and leaving them in place for transit. This nifty little sucker here is a flame sensor. So if the wind comes along and blows the flame out, it'll turn the gas out. The unfortunate thing about that is the first time you turn the gas on, you need to hold this down until it actually ignites. The first time you do it, you could be here like four, six minutes as that gas pushes through the system, purges all the air out. If it gets an airlock in there, it won't take even longer. I recommend doing it as a two-person job. One person stand back here and turn on like two of those, and then one person slowly turn on the gas bottle so that air's got something to go and just rush up here and get it before the airlock. One everyone asks about, the battery is up to the side of this drawer. 
guys have seen this one at home. One black tab comes up, one black tab goes down, and the yeah. drawer will slide out. Up inside there, you'll see the black compartment. If you flip the lid down at the front, you can see where the D cell oh, yeah. battery is stored. So the D cell battery is stored just inside there. Very good. If that goes flat, don't stress about it too much. Just light the stove with a lighter. When you get home, do change it though, because that also drives the power for your flame sensors. So if it goes totally yeah. flat, the flame won't stay ignited or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. You put the water hose in, and away you go. That one, that one. Turn on pump two, and from there, the pressure pump you just turn the tap on and off. Really, really easy to do. If you wanted hot water, and you had your hot water running across, it's a simple matter of just changing the hose over, yeah. and away you go. So, one thing to remember when this red cap's in and this is forward, then that system's actually open. So, if you turn the pump on, the water's just going to spray everywhere. If you just pull the red cap out and that system's still open, the water's going to spray everywhere. It's a little bit different to an air fitting. You need to push that collet back and then it locks the system off for you. Guys that run inside here, they're fine, they're really air fine. Yeah. So twisting them back together is not a problem. Getting the heat in it to get the solar to melt without melting that entire wire yeah. is a bit of a trick. So just make sure as soon as you finish with it, unplug it and tuck the wire back. So this side here is where you'll find your gas hose and your sullage hose and your kitchen as well, up yeah. in there. That's a bayonet fitting. That's a bayonet fitting, correct, yeah. 100%. You know how those bayonet fittings work? You're not yet. That's it, so we won't run you through that. Uh, you can either put a bucket under there, if you like me, you keep it all the time. I okay. do recommend the hose normally comes out the back, so run it out the back. Back here, and then I loop it up over here, yep. and then have the jerry can or the bucket underneath there to catch the That's it. Nice. Roof rack goes up. Wait, do you not do this side first? Or you have to do that first? Yeah, so we'll put the roof rack all the way up. That's it, all the way up to 90 degrees, and then the pin goes back. Nice. All yeah. right, while you're here, we can undo all the latches on this side of the trailer. As we come around the back, we'll lower that spare wheel down. That's it. That's it. Then we open first because they're just locking from each other. So I can come on first. Just strap underneath there. Yeah. Then we'll have to go. Okay, those reinforcing corners that I showed you for your bed corners, if you choose to, you can just go through them in place here. It only has to cover this bit of metal, yeah. you don't have to go all the way up to this point. That goes underneath. Yep, that one goes underneath. Like this. Nice. Remember that back? Yep. Then just hit that from underneath, make sure you don't stick your fingers come over. And the elastic loop loop for the toggle at the back there as well. You probably can't see that up there. Can you get that one now? Seven on the other. And then mount it underneath here. Before you put it in, it's a good idea just to run your finger around the outside of there. So, is that tight enough? Yeah. Yeah. Just so it's seated. All right. Up underneath here, I can get our oscillator is really clean. Under there, so I see that one there, yeah. Just unscrew that one to open it up. That's it, so unscrew that one, any clockwise, just a couple of turns, that's perfect. Yeah. That's all it needs to be. Yeah. 
open that one up. Do you remember what to do here? Perfect. Yeah. Right, Get on. All we do is you find the well, you can do it, you'll get these tabs off the back. And they're just going to clip up in through here, and then you're on both sides, and then your door will just melt right down to it. When you want to run your draft skirt, your draft skirt's going to run in between that and the door. So you get your draft skirt, you find the zipper, and you zip it on along here. Exactly the same on the opposite side, there's a zipper up underneath here, you zip it on along here. Then you pull it down and run it around your door, and then you velcro it into the two ends. If you velcro it into the two ends first because it is really tight, it'll lift up through this hinge here and make it really hard to open it the door. So, round the door, zip, round the door, velcro it in. Okay, my favourite feature of the camper trailer is the cafe wall. So, this zip up here, and this zip up underneath here. Open up that glove. The best way to roll it is from the inside, so sit inside and roll it up that way because you're going to run out of height really quick. Everything you need to do when you set it up, you need to twist that 90 degrees and isolate that out of the system. So if you forget to do that, it will go down on you. Yep. Not it may, it will go down on you. The compressor's designed to push the air back this way, it's not designed to push the air down this way. Forget to open that. Because I do all the time. Four out of five people trailers I pack away, I just get to open the belt when I pack it away because it's the last thing you can do. If you ever go to set it up and all the pump does is that, then you know, reach inside the door and open that isolator because it's just filling that really short air tube. It hits 7 psi really quickly and away you go. Right, let's head inside and make up the couch. The two bags that it all came in, if you ever need to store it in there. Again, here's your front doors for your camper. You can go on the wrong way around, just make sure they look all the same as all these windows. The camper's on the inside, the fly screen's on the outside. So this is the inside of the door, and the fly screen's the outside. If you put them on the wrong way around, it's no big deal, just make sure they're outside, they make that kind of effect the purpose. Your floor. Mm. Your floor is sitting just down underneath here, so that's that's your canvas with your floor for down there. Mm -hmm. These are your dividing walls for each, uh, sorry, this one's a draft skirt. Yeah. It's gonna go across the front of the camper yeah. trailer. So that one's a draft skirt there. These are your dividing walls for out in the annex if you choose to yeah. make bedrooms or anything like that out there in the annex. Yeah. One thing to remember though, if you've got the dividing wall up the kitchen end, make sure you drop it to the ground before you cook. It's very close to the stove, but it also blocks the gas chimney with the boiler out there sort of thing. And these are your two end walls for each each end of the camper trailer there as well. So really really easy to put them on and off. You just sit them on and off, choose choose what you want on and off and yeah, pack it all away. The bottom there you'll see that's currently set to 21 amps. Yeah. Sometimes when the power trips that'll cycle back down to two amps. It'll never yeah. charge you back to two amps. So just make sure it's always on 21 amps. The reason I say to have that red key on at the front when you're charging it is so that you can quickly see what that battery voltage is doing. And having it in off the front of the camper trailer with your 50 amps use. Yeah, it's just a safety fuse. Yep, exactly right. Just 50 amps usable length. So if you find you're not getting power from your solar panels or anything like that, just check that fusible length with your trickle. So why do they do that? The fusible length. Are these? Oh, the batteries? Depends on how you look after them. If you look after them, you'll get 7 to 10 years out of them. If you don't look after them, well, months, two years, sort of like if you leave 
Um, ATMs like to be fully charged all the time, so if you're leaving it flat, also like Every month I recommend the depth of self-discharge is really, really slow for um, battery, which is good. So yeah, every couple of months a month, you just kind of plug it. Your ultimate end goal is again, is just to be able to plug it straight up. Okay, inside here is another storage box. Underneath that, this false floor here. Underneath there, take that one screw out and that's how you access your air pump. Yeah. So that's where your air pump's gonna be under there. Sometimes, for some reason, um, that button on the front doesn't work. There are two buttons on, you don't have to get your hand pump out. There's an on button on that air pump yeah. there. So just push the canvas out of the way, you can access this wall, it's totally flat, and just push that button on there. Days without water, and long the sun so grown. We cross over borders to get where we are. And it's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, I did it all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, nights without sleep. It ain't enough for two And it's all for you It's all for you It's all for you It's all for you I did it all for you It's all for you It's all for you It's all for you and then also packing it up. The service that set up camp is fantastic and Scotty has done a great job showing us how to do all of this. If you're interested in Opus Camper, make sure you come and check out all of uh, the set up camp's website and uh, come down to their showroom and have a look at the Opus Campus. Uh, if you enjoyed this video guys and you want to follow along with our travels uh, around Australia or just want to see more about the Opus Camper, make sure you head over to my channel and check out all of my other uh, travel videos. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so you know when I post in my next episode and if you really like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one. It's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you.